11 years ago, we started Stone Brewing Company, we being my partner, Steve Wagner, and I. He's our brewmaster. And we did it because we were both mad fanatics about this thing called craft beer. Um, actually, more popular at that time, it was called micro, micro brews. And we, we wanted to just create our own version of what we thought great beer was all about. Um, recognizing that it was just you know, going to be our little slice of that. So 11 years later, uh, we have this now. This is actually uh, the restaurant, the Stone Brewing World Bistro and Gardens, is just over a year old, a year and three months, and the brewery production here in this facility is about two years old. Um, we moved over um, after spending nine and a half years in San Marcos, and now we're in Escondido. When we started Stone Brewing, we realized that we had different philosophies about beer than most people and most in the industry, even at that time. Uh, and more so that we had our own particular ideas about what we thought great beer was all about, and we decided that it was only fair for us to do what we felt inside and then share that. It's almost like being, you know, a musician, like being a band. I think you're doing everybody a service if you're not playing what style of music that you want to play. Granted, you got to be good at it. But if you are, if you're really doing something that's true to yourself and you're good at it, then that could, that's going to be pretty spectacular. So, when it came to opening a restaurant, one, I wanted to not serve anybody anything that I wouldn't eat myself. Because I've studied about food quite a bit, and I've learned about the industrial food system that we have here, and all the failures that are entwined and entangled within, <clears throat> and understanding about how food is grown and distributed, etc. I only eat uh, natural meats, or I eat no meat, and I don't even eat that much meat myself. And I uh, I seek out uh, locally grown in-season organic vegetables and, and produce and because I don't have anything that doesn't qualify for that in my house well essentially this is uh, this is our house too and your honored guests everybody that comes through is an honored guest and how do you treat an honored guest no less than you would treat yourself so that was a fundamental principle that we decided to apply here so we have all organic uh, naturally raised in-season local produce natural red meats and so on then well, I don't like boring food. So, thought, okay, now that we've got these great ingredients to start from that we're going to get to the kitchen and left, let our chef and, and, and kitchen team go wild, let them go wild. Let them, let them use their passion, let them use their skills to create all these wonderful dishes. So that's the approach. It's eclectic, catches people off guard sometimes. Hell, it even makes people angry. What do you mean you don't have a chicken sandwich and you know, french fries? No, we don't. You know, you want a chicken sandwich and french fries? Go someplace that has that. You want a fizzy yellow beer? Go someplace that has that. But we don't do what those other people do. That's not what the world needs. It doesn't need more chicken sandwiches. It needs... I don't know if it needs us or not, but... Whether or not he needs it, we're here. That's what we do. It's a combination of both extraordinarily joyous times for the craft brewing industry because of the growth curve that we've been on, and extraordinarily challenging times because of the temporary, but uh, still just I can't even I can't even form words around it. You know, with the the barley prices and then the hop shortage. You just don't have the hops, then what the hell do you do? Especially if you think of the world like we do. Fortunately, it's done. We've been contracting for a number of years for our hop needs. So, even though we didn't see this particular thing coming, we were poised or prepared to be able to handle it. That, that's good for us. Um, so, short term, it's going to hurt. It's going to, you know. Certainly our anniversary uh, ale this year and the Stone Vertical Epic Ale for the, o, the Stone 080808 Vertical Epic Ale, it's not going to be a hoppy beer. Um, but, you know, in the larger, let's look forward a couple of years, once we get out of this, this very troubling circumstance, but it will, you know, this too will pass. Um, 
it's exciting for craft beers because we really seem, we collectively now as craft brewers, really seem to have gotten a lot better connecting with the public or maybe the public better connecting with us or it's probably the reality. It's a mutual thing. And it's hard for me to fathom that going away. As long as we collectively craft brewers continue to maintain our focus. It's troubling to me every once in a while when somebody comes out with a berry bites and you know a light, you know, or, or coming out with a light what they call label a light beer or you know, any of these sort of very trendy non-craft forays. Because it reflects on all of us in the craft beer industry. That's why when you look at our 32 taps, eight to ten of which are usually stone and the rest are guest taps, you're going to see only really nice quality guest taps, only really great quality uh, craft beers, and never, the, never ever the fizzy yellow stuff, ever, ever the fizzy yellow stuff. But also, uh, we don't put on, you know, the, the mediocre guys either, and even though they might be in the craft beer world. Uh, as long as the craft beer enthusiast continues to uh, educate themselves, and understand and support the ones that are really great. Uh, I think we're all going to do very, very well. And the guys that should fall by the wayside will. Every time a great brewery opens, I dance a jig. Every time a bad brewery closes, I dance a jig. Uh, so that's my fundamental attitude. I've never uh, been so forgiving is to say that this system is a bad beer, uh, unfortunately. Uh, and you know, the thing is, the people that make really mediocre beer genuinely recognize that fact within themselves. They, they think for some reason that the world still, there's a niche that they can, they can fill. Why do you even want to go down that path? I have no idea. Um, but whatever the reason is that they're making mediocre beer, I don't think that, uh, well, I don't need them. <laughs> If they go away, I won't mind. I want to thump some, some consumers on the head. Okay, all the time. Okay, right now. If you haven't figured out craft beer yet and what a really good one is all about, and that light, you know, allow that light bulb to turn on in your head. Okay, you're the one that you thump, thump yourself because I'm not there to do it for you right now. Give yourself a good thumping and wake up. Smell the really nice roasty barley and wonderful hops. And get with it. Well, I can't anyway.